This past weekend, Captain Marvel made close to $500 million worldwide in like three days. Uh, by comparison, Alita Battle Angel, the Robert Rodriguez film that a lot of people have been comparing it to, uh, I think made maybe $100 million less than that in its entire theatrical run. Why are people comparing these two films, and why are most of the people comparing these two films such flagrant assholes? Right off the bat, this is not going to be an actual, real, one-to-one -one comparison of Alita Battle Angel and Captain Marvel. Uh, this isn't one of those kind of videos. I'm not going to talk about Mary Sue's and who's the best girl and other weird things that like asshole movie nerd guys talk about in videos like this. Really, this is more an exploration of why these two films are being pitted against each other, uh, what the actual differences between the two of them are, and also uh, just an avenue for me to talk about my personal feelings about both films. There are some minor similarities between Alita Battle Angel and Captain Marvel. Uh, Alita Battle Angel is based on a famous manga, Captain Marvel is based on a famous comic book. Alita Battle Angel and Captain Marvel are both about female protagonists who are suffering from amnesia, who are trying to refine themselves, and by the end of the film they both end up who they always were, and they're sort of using their uh, respective gifts and abilities to sort of wage like a one-woman war against like an evil figure. Uh, and stuff. So, like, and they both set up sequels. Only one of them sequels is going to actually get made. Yeah. That's about it, though. Uh, obviously. Otherwise, the movies are not really related. Uh, they're, they're very different, I think, aims. And, um, you know, they're kind of aimed at slightly different audiences. You know, comparing the two is kind of unfair. Obviously, the main people comparing the two films together are doing so in bad faith. It's largely guys who hate the idea of Captain Marvel, they don't like when there's not like a white straight male protagonist at the forefront of their genre films, um, you know, like most famously, I think I saw like James Woods tweeting about this, which is like, don't you have other fucking stuff to do? Like, hit on teenage girls or whatever, and uh, I think it's just strange that, you know, a lot of people are comparing these two films essentially uh, for like dickhead reasons. Um, but there there are some reasons to compare the two films that I think are somewhat valid. I'm going to get into that later in the video. But, but really, there's no need to pit these two films against each other. You don't have to fucking pick one of the two of them. They're movies, all right? Like, you can watch both. You can watch more than this. You can watch neither. Uh, the idea that you always have to sort of, like, this binary between films, especially films either about, you know, uh, people of color or of women or whatever, like, you know, non-straight white guy thing. Like, if you're a straight white guy and there's a movie about you, you don't have to only pick one straight white guy movie of the year, right? Like, you get to watch, like, fucking 30. So, I don't think this is a situation where it's like, we should be pitting movies about and starring, you know, powerful women against one another. I think that's dumb and it's silly. Um, but it leads into another issue I have uh, about one of these films. And it's that... Captain Marvel has become this thing in the last few days, week, whatever, where the discourse around the film is just so toxic and draining, and it's just people arguing over like a million different things, uh, many of which have nothing to do with the actual movie, and it's frustrating because like if you just engage with the movie itself, you know, there are things about the film that are issues, there are things about the film that are good. But people aren't really doing that. For the most part, people are just arguing about all the outside things about the film. Now, I wrote an actual real review of Captain Marvel. Uh, I'll link it below in the description. It's like a real review of the movie. I, you know, thought it was fine. Um, but the bullet point version of that is there's stuff I liked about the movie, and there's stuff I really didn't like, like, at all. Stuff I liked. Uh, I like the scrolls. I love Ben Mendelsohn. I think he's amazing. I think, uh, I think Brie Larson is amazing. I think she's really funny and, like... You know, has a great screen presence. I loved uh, LaShawna Lynch, who played Maria Rambo. Uh, I, I love Annette Benning being in the movie, doing anything. Annette Benning is fantastic. I think every movie should have, like, 40% more Annette Benning. And, you know, I liked... Uh, the de-aging stuff was cool with Sam Jackson. I think that was neat. Uh, there's some funny bits in it. I love the cat. Everyone loves the cat. The cat's really cool. Goose is great. Uh, it's like a fun movie, alright? Like, I, I watched it a few days early, you know, I had a, I had a good time, I enjoyed it. It was fun, like, it was a fun movie, I was like, that was a good time, it was great. Then, like, the, there's like a three block walk from that theater to my apartment, uh, and on that walk, I had already just 
all of the joy I had about the movie kind of dissipated. Just thinking about it for more than a minute, I just, all these other things about the movie stuck out to me that I realized I was just like, you know, I didn't really like that that much, you know? This is sort of the culmination for me of a slow rolling Marvel fatigue that I personally have been feeling. You know, in the last couple of years, anytime I see people talk about superhero movie fatigue, I'm the guy making fun of them because it's like, how are you fatigued by movies? Just don't fucking watch them. Grow up. But after Black Panther, I guess maybe the second time I saw Black Panther last year, I started to kind of feel what people were talking about, where I was like, you know, I've seen every MCU movie, you know, I've had fun with them, I enjoy them, I love comic books, I love superheroes, I'm into it, I get it. But the sense that other people were having, where they were getting excited about the event of it, about this new Marvel movie, and this is happening, and what's going to happen in the mid-credits scene, and ooh, there are going to be Easter eggs, where's Stan Lee going to pop out? Like, that stuff was already falling off for me during the Black Panther run. By the time Infinity War came out, I was just like... I. Part of it is that at the time of the release of Infinity War, I started working at another movie theater, and it was the first time in my, like, ten years of working at movie theaters that I was working at a theater that booked mainstream movies so I actually worked during so I actually worked while a Marvel movie was playing and spending a few weeks of just interacting with people and listening to people talk about Marvel movies not my nerdy friends but just the average film goer it like kind of put into sharp focus just all my issues with why I was getting tired of the Marvel movies like I just didn't care I you know I, I think they work really well and they're in their sturdy pieces of franchise filmmaking, I guess. I just stopped caring. I didn't, I wasn't excited to see Infinity War. I watched it and I had a good time. Uh, I rewatched it in pieces. And by pieces, I mean, I just watched all the parts where Thanos beat people up and that one part where Chris Evans comes out of the shadows, that was pretty tight. I just didn't, you know, it just didn't do anything for me anymore. And that's okay, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, I think I waited like four or five months to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, and I already don't remember anything from that movie. Like I just don't, it's just this is gone they come to the realization that that's marvel now you know they're they're a very powerful brand they're gonna put out three movies a year or whatever and they're all gonna make tons of money because you know people like the characters and like the brand and there's still some things that are very enjoyable about them but they're they're just so flat they're starting to feel so lifeless to me is the issue i'm not feeling like i have anything i can really sink my teeth into like, it's always a fun cast of actors I like, characters I care about. There's, like, quips that are, you know, funny at the moment, but then are just, like, later. And I... It's just not doing anything for me. I feel like these there's, like, 20 of these movies now, and they've made so many, and they're so successful, that they should be able to deviate from their formula because they've earned, like... They've earned the right to experiment. They've earned... The, 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 the ability to, like, have some wiggle room. Like, if Disney can't fucking put out a crazy, ridiculous movie that does nutty stuff and, and tries to do something new, then who else has the power to do it? You know? Uh, that's disconcerting, right? You know? I, I, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna talk about this film too much, but when I saw The Last Jedi, you know, that's a Disney movie, and I, I sort of felt like... I definitely felt more of, like, Ryan Johnson being in that movie and making it, and it felt kind of like a unique thing, and they took some ch chances, some things didn't work, some some did, and I, don't, I know the movie's like a huge like firebrand for people, and people want to stab each other over it, but I really liked it, and I had a really good time, and I realized that I'd never had that kind of feeling during any of the newer Marvel movies. Like, in Black Panther, there are little flashes of it, but the more I watched the film, the more I realized this just fits right back in with the other MCU stuff. And Captain Marvel, to me is like the the height of that it's not worse than any other mcu films per se uh it just so much of it that i didn't like uh was the way it looked and how flat it felt and how it just i felt like i was watching a tv show this movie cost close to 200 million dollars and nothing in it felt spectacular and like cool and exciting the way i expected it to and i definitely felt this in smaller doses through other Marvel movies like I've never really cared about the Guardians films that much um Ant-Man's fun I guess like you know Doctor Strange was cool like I'm I, I'm, I'm not someone who thought they were all amazing and then this one sucks it's like I've always thought they were pretty good and there were things I liked and didn't like and then this one I just came to this like crashing realization that like 
oh wow, I just, this isn't, maybe this isn't for me anymore. And obviously, uh, no one in the world needs like another like man's opinion about Captain Marvel. Like I get it. I get that the reason the movie is so popular right now and the reason so many people love it is because it's like a female superhero and obviously there are going to be like little bits of nuance and stuff that like really spoke to women that aren't going to speak to me because I'm not a woman and I'm not an asshole and like I know that. You know, I was complaining to someone about how I didn't like the sequence. This is this is otherwise spoiler free, but the bit where Carol is like fighting all the spaceships, like it's in the fucking trailer. This isn't a spoiler. And the other person I was complaining about this to thought I like didn't like it because I thought that Carol was overpowered and I thought that like, you know, it wasn't fair. I think that they thought that I thought that Carol was like a Deus Ex Machina and that, like her abilities were too unrealistic or something and like. I'm not that person at all. When people talk about Superman being overpowered, I laugh in their face. Like, I love, I don't, I'm not that person. I don't care about people having too many powers. Like, whatever. My issue wasn't that the movie ended with a woman single-handedly fighting a bunch of spaceships. Like, I think more movies should end that way. I don't I think Molly's game would have been really cool if Jessica Chastain fought some robots at the end. But to me, it's not that it was a woman doing this stuff. Like, that stuff was great. That's awesome. I love people beating up spaceships. It's that it looked so damn boring. It just, there was no sense of scope. It was just like, it felt like perfunctory, like the, everything about it to me was just flat and like dead. And I was just like, ah, you know? And like, that's what's really frustrating about Captain Marvel is that it's it's a difficult film to criticize or, or talk about without having to like preface with like, no, 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 no. It's not like a sexist thing. Like it's, 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 a, it's a filmmaking thing. Like all of the weird issues that I've seen other guys have about the movie, about Carol as a character and like, different things you know generally the, the the chiefest response to those criticisms is you know there's tons of movies with guy superheroes that do this so like what's the big deal and it's like that's those aren't the things i'm complaining about like i don't care about a lot of like the basic superhero movie tropes and, and and stuff like that it's more just that the movie is just to me very dull and lifeless and just colorless and uh, you know there's colors in it but you know what i mean it just it just feels like blah. That doesn't mean that other people can't enjoy it. Tons of my friends seem to love this movie, and I'm so happy for them because, like, it's a fun movie, and, like, that's great, and everyone should have a good time at movies, and, you know, just because I didn't doesn't mean the end of the world, you know? But something really stuck with me is that when I would tell people I didn't like it, people were like, well, you only saw it once, so you gotta, like, see it again. And it's like, I don't have to see it again. I don't, I don't have to do that, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I happen to not have to pay for this movie, and I happen to have access to see it again, for free it's not like a money issue it's just like a not even like a time issue like obviously all i do is watch movies you know but i just that's a weird proposition right like we're at this point with marvel where if you like a marvel movie it's like whatever and if you don't like it they're like well maybe you should see it again it's like i have to watch this movie two to three times to decide if i like it you know and and also the notion that marvel has sort of positioned their newer releases in such a way where it's like they don't feel like movies anymore. They feel like, you know, uh, bargaining chips where it's like, if, you know, if you don't like Black Panther, then you must be racist. And it's like, no, I think there are a lot of racists that don't like Black Panther, but that's not accurate, you know? Um, lots of black people didn't like Black Panther. Lots of women don't like Captain Marvel, you know? It's, um, it, it, it's, it's kind of unfair that these movies are being used in that way. Because at the end of the day, if you're, like, championing, I went and saw a movie that all the trolls hated and stuff, it's like, yeah, you're you're mostly just supporting, like, a corporation, though. Like, it's just Disney. They're doing great. Like, super great. They're fine. You know, you're not... If, if it thinks you feel good to go out and support a movie or, like, take kids to go see it and stuff, like, that's great. Like, that's awesome. But it does seem weird to suggest to others that they do the same if they're not interested in doing so. So <clears throat> that's that's how I feel about, about that, about that element of the Marvel stuff. I think the movie itself... It's, you know, it's cool. Hey, there's a female superhero, and, like, she's the lead, and she gets to, you know, I mean, I sort of think that Wonder Woman did that already and was, like, better. Like, you know, even the idea of Marvel calling it, like, the first female superhero, it's like, you guys could have done this shit, like, five years ago. You know what I mean? Like, you guys are super late to the party, and you're patting yourselves on the back for it and being, like, indignant about it. Like, that just seems odd, you know? Um, uh. There are so many more interesting uh, observations about the film to be made from actual female film critics. I've linked some in the description below of just stuff that I think I, I read that I thought was really cool. And you should definitely read those because I know I'm kind of saying a lot of things a lot of other guys are saying. But I, I say all that to get into the other thing. So because I kept seeing all of these like douchebags talking about like, oh, you should go see a real strong woman like Alita, 
bug-eyed girls got robot tits or whatever. Um, I was skeptical. Skeptical for a number of reasons. Uh, when the Alita <laughs> Battle Angel marketing material stuff started coming out, like the trailers and everything, I just dismissed it outright. I laughed. Uh, I didn't understand why she had to have the big anime eyes. I didn't know why anyone thought I should watch Robert Rodriguez pretend to be James Cameron for two hours. Like, I was like, not gonna watch that. That was another film I had the opportunity to see for free and just said, fuck that, I'm not doing it. Then, after the Captain Marvel thing, after I watched that, I was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'll, I'll watch Alita. I'll watch Alita Battle Angel. We'll see what happens. You know, I'd, I'd seen a couple of other friends who have pretty interesting tastes say things about it that made it piqued my interest. You know, um... Uh, I saw my friend Neil compare it to Speed Racer, and I was like, oh, okay, my, my interest has peaked. Um, and I've seen, I've seen other things, just uh, other pieces about the film that just seemed a little... It, it, it made me think that maybe there was more going on with the film than I had assumed, which happens all the time. I'm not perfect. Then I watched Alita Battle Angel, and like, I have to preface this, it is not a great film by the stretch of the imagination. It has tons of problems and little things, and the writing is not strong. But I loved it. I loved it. I... Oh, there's so many things about the movie that are, like, stupid. And, like, I wish it had been written by, you know, slightly smarter people. But it... <sighs> the big thing that got me about Alita Battle Angel is that, for better or for worse, it feels like a movie where a lot of choices were made. Like, it feels like a movie. It feels like its own thing. And some of those choices are kind of goofy, and some of the uh, CGI stuff is, like, kind of not great looking and, and, and whatever... But so much of the movie just looks so gorgeous. The effects work is really cool. The action is, like, clear, well-staged, legible. Even the scenes at night are the scenes where there's a lot of, like, warring things happening in the frame. You can tell what's happening. You can follow the sequences. You're excited. You're into it. You know, uh, there's there's a moment in the movie, uh, without spoiling anything, where Alita, like, discovers that she has, like, kung fu powers or whatever. And she's, like, beating up these cyborgs. And... She has a flashback to her previous life. I'm not explaining the plot to Alita Battle Angel because, like, you guys have Google and, like, fuck it. She has this flashback from, like, her previous life, from before this current life that she's living, that she's trying to figure out who she is. And it's just this, like, really big burst of action of her, like, on the moon, fighting some kind of, like, moon war. And it was amazing. Like, my eyes popped out of my head. I, it, looked, it looked so good. And it just had, like, so much energy. And it was just, like, this flavor. And I was just like, oh, I'm into this. And, like, it made me think about, like, the initial, like, sequences in Captain Marvel, like, where they're on Hala, and then, like, when they go on a mission together and stuff, and, like, how just boring it looked. I felt like I was watching a sci-fi original movie, you know, and that everything just kind of felt, like, stayed, and just, like, obviously they have a lot more to cover in the Captain Marvel movie. They have to introduce this new character, they have to introduce other parts of the Cosmic Marvel Universe that Guardians didn't set up, they have to, for whatever reason, fit in, like, 90 million jokes about the 90s. And, you know, they have to do all that in, like, a two-hour runtime. And they have to set up the sequels. They have to position people so that it'll make sense for Infinity War sequel Endgame and all that. I get it, I get it. I get it. But, you know, Alita does a lot in its runtime, too. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not the most well-paced movie, I'll say that. But when it's on, when it's firing all cylinders, it is just gorgeous. And it's just exciting. And it looks cool. And it feels interesting. And it feels like a movie where they spent a lot of money and, like, they got something out of it, you know? And part of that is because it is just Robert Rodriguez doing an impression of James Cameron. And I love James Cameron. James Cameron's a fucking god. And, you know, Robert Rodriguez is, like, a cool dude. I like his movies and I like his personal ethos and stuff. But, you know, he's not on the level of a James Cameron. But watching him try to kind of ape that style was exciting, you know? And it was cool. And I felt like it was... I feel like even a bootleg version of what James Cameron does with action filmmaking is just, like, leagues beyond what we're getting in the Marvel movies, where they keep getting these independent filmmakers to move to the big budget realm, and then, you know, they get to, I guess, handle, you know, the character work and stuff, but then, like, the same second unit type people are doing all the action stuff, and it looks the same in every movie, and it's the same sequences over and over again. It's just... It just sucks. I'm just I'm just over it. Like, I really miss the idea of something like Alita Battle Angel, which, again, again, not a perfect movie, not a great movie, not necessarily, I guess, now that I've had a few days to think about it better than Captain Marvel, but I had a way better time. I was way more into it. I didn't feel like I had to force myself to like it. It just kind of happened, you know? 
I think that lately the conversation around Marvel movies and how tiresome they are and how people are getting bored of them and stuff, it's always fighting against the idea that these are important movies and people need representation and diversity and all this stuff. And it's like, diversity is is important. I do think on-screen representation is important. I've written tons of things about that in the past. I, I, I love the idea of kids being able to go see themselves on screen and stuff like that. Like, I'm not fighting against that. But, like, you know... Marvel's reaching this place where instead of actually taking risks, instead of actually telling diverse and exciting stories, they're just going to start doling out, like, we've had a black Marvel movie now. Now we're having, like, a female Marvel movie now. Now we're going to get, like, an Asian one with Shang-Chi, and then they're going to, I guess, try to make Icarus in Eternals gay now, and I don't think that's actually going to make any sense, I, I, it would, but whatever. You know, I'm not someone that cares about race bending or gender bending in, in movies, especially superhero movies. You can make characters whatever race, whatever gender, whatever sexual orientation. Like, more diversity is great. People need to be able to see themselves on screen. Especially in these big giant movies since this is what's taken over the multiplex, right? But, like, that's not, like, enough. <laughs> like, I would... I, I, they can make these movies more exciting. They can make them, you know, more... They can, they can try. They can try to do new things with them, not just regurgitating the same things over and over again. Um, and, you know, going back to the original point about we shouldn't be pitting movies starring, you know, powerful females against each other, um, we wouldn't have to do that if we just had more of them. You know, that's, like, the real thing. Like, just make more movies like this. You know, if we lived in a world where there were, like, two or three Captain Marvel-esque movies and there were, like, two or three Elite-esque movies and they were all different on their own little, like, shades of variation in planes, people would get to pick and choose and they'd, they'd get to have options, you know? They wouldn't just have to pick, like, okay, well, the Captain Marvel movie is, like, more popular and will have more water cooler discussion, but it's the same old shit I've already seen, or I can see Alita, but then I have to put up with all of the dialogue in Alita Battle Angel. Like, that's pretty tough, you know? And I think the big thing we can maybe do with our little piddly influence on the way the film industry works is just, you don't always have to go see the new Marvel movie if you don't want to. I get that you have to, your friends are going to want to talk about it and you want to be involved and stuff, but like, you know, you don't have to. You know, if I didn't probably have to review Endgame, I don't think I'd bother going to see it, really. Um, you know, I'm only excited for Spider-Man Far From Home because Jake Gyllenhaal's in it, and I'd do anything for Jake Gyllenhaal. Maybe we should try occasionally taking more of a chance on something like Elite Battle Angel. You know, maybe I shouldn't have just made memes and laughed at it the minute I saw the trailer. Maybe I should have been more open to trying something that might be a little different, that might fail. I'd kind of, at this point in my life, rather watch movies that have all this money and take some risks and, and maybe fuck up and maybe aren't perfect and fail than these Marvel movies that aren't trying to take any risks or do anything differently and basically cannot fail. They basically are just going to keep doing this and we're going to keep helping them. And then we're going to keep fighting people on the internet for them. And, like, I just don't want to do that anymore. So, yeah. That's the... <clears throat> so, yeah. That's that's how I feel. I mean, obviously everyone's going to have different feelings about this uh, subject. Many people are probably going to have more interesting things to say about it than I have. And, uh, you know, you can always sound off in the comments and, like, argue with me or each other. You can hit me up on Twitter and, you know, tell me you think I'm an idiot and stuff. That's cool. It's okay. I'm, sometimes I am. Um... And, yeah, you know, we're entering that part of the year. You've got Shazam coming up and, and Endgame and, and whatever the hell else. And, obviously, you know, uh, these movies, because they're such big parts of monoculture, they lead to arguments. They lead to people fighting and debating. And, you know, a lot of times those debates, they just aren't about the movies themselves. We should try to engage with each other and not just go to war over fucking corporate pop culture you know that's it for this week i don't want everyone to think this is going to become a channel where we just complain about marvel type stuff all the time or you know i'm not gonna like start telling people i want to petition for the snyder cut soon or something like that you know uh next week we're probably gonna do something a little bit more low-key uh so yeah thanks guys uh thank you for getting us so close to 100 subscribers we're like really nearly there and that's really cool uh and if you guys you know have any movies coming up that you like want to see me cover uh feel free to hit me up like i'm open-minded i'll watch pretty much anything all right have a great week thanks